Good morning. Welcome to Washita Mountain Podcast. My name is Mike. It is a Tuesday morning. A very rainy Tuesday morning. So, you know, when I set up this podcast, I like it to kind of be dark in here, get the lighting right. And so I look for something with a black background on the computer, and I just pulled one up. Did you know there is a video on YouTube, if you could call it a video, and and this is the name of the title, 10 hours and one second of pure black screen. I'm going to make this full, and we'll see if the light changes. But that's not what's interesting. What's interesting is that that video, and it was put up 10 years ago, has 26 million views. Can you imagine if I put a purple one or a red one up? I may do that. Because I like to live on the edge. Now that's a bit too dark. But look at my camera adjust. It's setting the mood. You got to like that. Okay. Let's put it back. Is that uh, You can only watch too much black screen. Oh, the eclipse. Well, I got the video up, guys. Uh, very disappointed in my... How the filming of that went. Um, that screen. You order the cheap stuff off Amazon, you get what you pay for. And I just, uh, it didn't come out good. At the very end of the video, the time lapse was pretty cool. But, you know, when you're filming with stuff that doesn't have a zoom lens or any of that, it's just going to look like a little orange ball anyway. Did the best I could. So if you haven't seen that, check it out on my other channel, The Dog Man. There's a link on this channel in the community page that'll lead you right to that video. Um, did the best I could, kind of walked around, you know, the chickens were kind of picking on each other, but other than that, everything was normal. It did give me weird dreams, though, last night, man, I'll tell you, and, you know, not just dreams, memories. You don't get those a lot with dreams, where they were actual events that occurred, and this particular event... (laughs) Although it was not funny at the time, uh, I had to laugh this morning because it's funny. Another another one of my adventures, well, so to speak. So let me see. I'm going to put this around 1993, about 1993, because we moved to Vegas soon after this, within months, and. I was working for a small Minnesota newspaper in a small Minnesota town, well, 10,000 population size town in Minnesota, close to the South Dakota border. And I was dating a lady that, you know, we were together for several years. And she was from there. And on the weekends, we would, you know, we would work a long shift on Friday night. And usually I would get off about 10 in the morning. And then she would get off. She also worked there. She worked, I worked running the presses. She ran the mail room, which in a newspaper, the mail room, once you print the paper, they put the inserts in them, the ads. Uh, a lot of people get newspapers by mail. So they get the labels put on. They get those put in mail bags. Mail, you know, it's mail. But they're usually about an hour behind the press, and then they're done. Well, this particular Friday night, uh, and and what we would do is on the weekends, uh, I would stay at her house. It was closer. That way we'd get a couple hours sleep, and then we'd go off and do something. We didn't have to be back to work till Sunday night. So anyway, I, I was staying at her house, okay? But they were having trouble in the mail room with their with their machines, with the mail machine or whatever. They put the labels on. So she would they were way behind. So I got done with my work and you know and we we were in one vehicle. And it's in Minnesota and this is probably in February and it was cold. It was probably eight, nine below. I know it was, because I walked in it. I walked to her house. 
I said, well, you, you know, we only had the one car. What happened to my camera? Still recording. It just went dark. I must have messed with the settings. So anyway, it was four or five miles to her house, which for me to walk that would be nothing. And, but it was cold. There was snow on the ground. The wind was blowing. But I had a coverall, you know, some insulated coveralls, gloves, the whole nine yards. And snow boots. So I walked to her place, not thinking that I didn't have any keys to it. <laughs> yeah. Did not have any keys to her place. I guess we were all so tired, didn't even dawn on me. So I get all the way to her house and didn't even dig in my pocket. I realized, wait a minute, I don't have a key to her house. Never have. Never asked for one. Because we were always together. Uh, so here I am, the house is locked up, tired in the drum, I go around checking windows, or, you know, it's very rural, it's out in the open, Minnesota is, unless you go up north, it's flat, and especially around South Dakota, it is flat as can be, and windy, and so I'm checking all the windows, hey man, they're all locked up, tired in the drum, it's a woman's house, it's like Fort Knox, you know? But there's a detached garage. It's not attached to the house. It's a separate building. So the door, on the side door on the garage, it was open. I'm like, hell yeah. As long as I can get out of this wind, I'm good. But it is still 8, 9, 10 below zero. And that only, you can only laugh, it doesn't matter how warm you're dressed. After a while, it starts getting to your bones, you know. And I'm a fairly young man back then, I'm 27, 28 years old. And uh, I'm pretty used to, I've already been there for a couple of years. I was used to the cold. Well, you never get used to Minnesota cold, never, never. So I go in there and I'm thinking, well, it's you know, a garage. Hey, man, I'll find a way to get warm. So there's got to be some way in there to warm up, some kind of heater or whatever. Well, this garage had zero electricity to it. It's a detached garage. It didn't have any power. It's a woman's house. And it has woman things in the garage. You know, a woman don't have cool stuff in their garage. They got baskets. And Christmas decorations. Woman stuff. There's, there's no kerosene lanterns or cook stoves or any of that. Woman stuff. You know, but being, you know, I, I, I've been trained in some survival. So, I'm looking around. And I ain't seeing anything that's going to get me any warmer than what I am now. And I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. But I know I'm not getting in the house. There's no cell phones in that day. Okay, if I, I could have walked out of there. It was about four miles to the nearest payphone. And I probably didn't even have a quarter on me. You know, I'm bundled up like Santa Claus in the Antarctica. So I start looking around and I see this big rolled up carpet. Yep. Rolled up carpet. Wasn't a shag carpet, just a Berber piece of piece of carpeting. She had her house carpeted. It was what was left, but it was a pretty big roll. So there's no car in the garage, obviously. Or I would have been in the house. So I unroll this carpet and it's it's pretty good, you know, it's probably fourteen by fourteen, give or take a little. And I lay down on the carpet, and I grab one in about in the center with my hand, and I start rolling. And I roll myself up in that carpet. And not only is it getting warmer, but it's pretty comfortable. And I get my head up in there. You wouldn't even, I'd look like a body rolled up in a carpet, because that's what I was. Oh. So I fell asleep. I know I'm not going to freeze to death. You know, there's no other way to heat up that garage. But I'm still on that concrete floor. But I've got several layers of that carpeting between me and that floor. And I fall asleep. <laughs> 
And, and keep in mind, there's snow on the ground. So she, when she came home, and it was several, several hours later, four, probably like four hours later. Okay, camera. Ah, the settings, guys. I'm sorry. Keep shutting off. So she comes home, opens the garage. Okay. When that garage door turns on, <laughs> garage door opener, when that dude turns on, I wake up instantly, and I'm in the middle of the garage floor in that carpet. So she starts pulling in. There I am. I'm wrapped up in a carpet. It ain't like I'm jumping up and going, hey! Couldn't do that. But she seen the carpet on the floor and, well, obviously couldn't pull in. So she gets out to move the carpet. She told me later, well, she figured it fell off the, you know, rolled out or fell off. It was, it was kind of on a shelf, but it wasn't real high. So there, it wouldn't have fell off. So... <laughs> She bends down to try to move the carpet, and I'm like, I screamed, hey! And she screamed, and uh, oh my God. She goes, what the hell are you doing in there? I'm like, I ain't got no key. And I just fall asleep. It's the only way I can keep warm. Now, man, that was not the only time I've had a survival situation um, in Minnesota. That, that ain't no place to play in the winter. And even in the summer, I will never forget, we, we were went to a casino, I think, in, in South Dakota, Watertown, South Dakota, which is kind of north of Sioux Falls. And we were in there, I don't know, we, everything we did was during the night, because we worked night hours. So this particular night, we'd pull out of there about 2, 3 in the morning. It is so foggy, you cannot see past the hood of your vehicle. And we've got an hour drive home, more than an hour, probably an hour and a half. It's, I mean, it's an hour from Sioux Falls, and we're half hour above that. I've never seen, and we are dead tired, dead tired, because we had worked and then slept a couple hours and then went there. I never had such a hard time driving in my life, and it's Interstate 90, you know. Once you get to Sioux Falls, it's inter, but Interstate 90 all the way. But there, you, you couldn't see. So we started, and actually from the time we left Watertown, I think I'm remembering the name of that, yeah, Watertown. We, we, all the hotels were booked. You know, people had pulled off the interstates, got hotels. So we had no choice but to drive. The nearest rest area was just past Sioux Falls. Pulled in there, and you couldn't even get a parking spot. There was nowhere to park. We had no choice, and it's one of them where you're driving, you're fighting, not only fighting the fog, you're fighting sleeping. And I'm like, rolling down the window, putting the music on loud, anything you can do to stay awake. Thank God we didn't drink any alcohol that night, because that would have made it ten times worse. Oh, so we took turns, I bet we took turns 15 times driving, because she was in the same you know position. This is how you're driving. And then the, the person next to you, you, you know, if I was in the passenger seat, she couldn't count on me because I'm over there like this. Same thing. If she, if I was driving, whoo, finally got home. But man, I, I remember floods. Oh, yeah, the weather can get bad there too. <laughs> but yeah. When you're put in a survival situation, you know, if that rug had not been in there, I would have probably been forced to hike back as far as it was, man. And by then, I'm bone chilled cold, you know. So it would have been miserable. I remember one time, and see, I had my house there. It was probably, it, there was no walking to that. That was way too far. But we had so much snow one night, and it wasn't so much the snow, it was the wind and everything else. So I go the next morning to open the front door, and it's a solid wall of snow. I ain't never seen so much snow in my life. A solid wall. You know, it's a seven-foot door, but it's buried. The snow drift had covered the whole front of the house. Had to go to the back and climb out a window and tunnel my way to the front. 
just to get the door open <laughs> and that was pointless because the whole yard was like that so well anyway guys it's getting too long just uh one of the another story of my past maybe i'll bring up some more of these maybe i'll tell you about my buddy steve uh, he's a character uh, maybe we'll do that on the next one thanks for watching guys happy trails <laughs>